poker's legendary champions, next generation stars, and tireless ambassadors of the game, sharing their wisdom and guiding your journey to high achievement on the green felt. This is Tactical Tuesday on Chasing Poker Greatness with your hosts, Brad Wilson and John Chai. Welcome, 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 my friend, to another episode of the Chasing Poker Greatness podcast. As always, this is your host, the founder of ChasingPokerGreatness.com, Coach Brad Wilson, and I'm joined by my co-host on Tactical Tuesday, Mr. Jonathan. How are you doing, sir? Doing good. How are you? Doing quite well. Doing quite well. Just We haven't uh, addressed your background. This is the second week in a row. Yeah, yeah. So... You know, we moved. I, I moved in the past few weeks. And so I'm setting my office up and actually have some plans for putting together a YouTube studio and upping the production value of Tactical Tuesday. If, if you're listening on the podcast, we also have a YouTube version. And, you know, don't, don't go and look at it right now on YouTube because it's just not, not as sexy as, as it can be. But in a couple of months, it's going to be going to be nice. We're, we're, we're really going to start taking things seriously as it relates to YouTube. So that's kind of what's going on with the background. But right now, yeah, it's bare, barren, nothing going on. But we got ideas. We got planning. We got a spreadsheet with a bunch of grocery items to go, to go purchase. And um, yeah, I'm excited about the next couple of months. Cool. But for now, we have... Multi-way Shit. pots with fish. <laughs> oh, oh, multi-way pots with fish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the theme today. Multi-way pots. That's the theme with today. Fish. All yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, with that being said, uh, I guess we can hop into the action. I've said it before. You know, I actually, this sort of language uh, of fish. You know, it, does it ever make you feel like a little uncomfortable, like just calling people fish? Like, it, it's like too, they're too derogatory, but like recreational. It's like you know, that's the that's the appropriate like is it i don't know like i've heard people say fun player right that seems like almost patronizing like yeah, that, that, that's worse than fish i think it, it's got to be worse than fish right yeah. like i think you know I, I have a course called fish in a barrel which yeah i, I like the name but i i think that over time my my language is probably going to change. Uh, I mentioned it before, but to, to the white belt language of, you know, just somebody who's very new, who hasn't really studied poker, right? Like just, I mean, it, some of the fish I play with though aren't, aren't particularly new. Well, <laughs> they haven't studied, they haven't learned, they haven't invested in, in becoming their best self as a poker player. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that inherently. I mean, some people like, you don't care if they don't care, you don't care. Right. Like it's recreation. It's fun. So go for it. Um, but I think the reality is, is like every single person who starts playing poker starts out as a fish. That's just the nature of it. That, that's just like, we are born poker fish. And over time we progress, we become better. And then, you know, we're still fish in a bunch of different nodes in the game tree, game tree, because poker is such a big game. Um, but eventually, you know, we just get better and then we start consuming the fish. Um, and yeah, so I, I think like there is this like negative sentiment towards the word fish, but in my mind, we all started out as fish and on and various streets and various parts of the game tree, we're still fish. We, we still don't exactly know what to do and we're going to make blunders because we're unstudied. So yeah, I have just something that I've, I've been thinking about, you know, we, we say fish and I know that like the, there's a negative connotation because like. I mean, essentially what, what you say when you say like fish, wreck, fun player, even a white belt, right? What we're essentially saying is they're, they're a losing poker player. They're going to lose money over their lifetime if they don't get their act together and, and you know, learn some preflop strats, buy some courses by someone, possibly myself with Chasing Poker Greatness. If you're, uh, Oh, this is how it all ties back. <laughs> yeah, it, it turns into a plug. But I mean, really, like uh, just, just wanted to like, talk about that for a second because I, th- there are negative associations with the word and I understand it. And yeah, I, I think that like, you just have to be okay with starting out level one as a noob, as a white belt, as a fish. And if you take it seriously, you'll get better. And 
that's that's the whole point. It's about the journey and the progression. So with that said, we got uh, multi-way pots with a bunch of fish. Um, <laughs> what do you uh, want to call them, man? Hey, you, you went on this 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 spiel about no, no, no. I, I think fish is no? fine. Like at least now, okay. at least now, the listener, the watcher understands you know the context in, w- in which I use the word, right? Like how I think of it. I, I don't I don't look at it as like a. I mean, I don't look at it as this like terrible, terrible thing, right? It, it's just a way to label them in language and so that everybody understands what's going on. Um, if you're listening, this is how you get invited into the good games. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually did have a moment of clarity because I, I, I when you said, what do you want to call them? Like I, I almost had to effing idiots um, <laughs> just, just because I thought it would be funny. And also... I realize, like, I've had feedback, you know, that some people listen to the podcast in their car, like, with their kids. And so, I'm trying to be a little cognizant of my language, but for, for, you're welcome. If that's you and you're listening right now, you're welcome. And also, you missed out, you made everybody else miss out on one great joke. So, hope you're <laughs> proud of yourself. Um, so, break down the action. All right. So, we're playing uh, 500 Zoom, the, Button opens to twelve dollars and fifty cents. He's probably not the fish. The small blind calls the twelve dollars and fifty cents. We can already probably start labeling this guy as True. as the fish. Yep. We have nines in the big blind, nine of clubs, nine of spades. Um, first question here, I think, is um, so facing just a, a standard button open and the small blind folds. This would be a, a pure three bet for me. Does the fish getting in there and the small blind change that for you at all? Does that make you want a three bet more? Does that make you want a three bet less? Um, should we think about flatting more because uh, we, you know, we'd like to get post swap with the fish where they're likely to make some pretty big mistakes, or or should we just go ahead and and keep squeezing? What, what's a very very good hand in this situation? Yeah, just seventy five, just squeeze. Like that's okay. I don't really have any other thoughts. You know, <laughs> I think just like there's no the small blind doesn't really change my thoughts about three betting with nines the hand is like way better than we need to three bet like so it makes it into a three bet range i don't think the small blind is like flatting with hands that dominate nines so yeah i just it it probably makes me want to squeeze a little bit more um but i'm definitely squeezing okay yeah you go 65 button calls small blind calls so we have a three-way. It's a party. It's a party. Three-way flop. Um, there's 195 in the middle. John's got 476, and everybody's all got about the same. So SPR is around like two and a half. You get a f- interesting flop. Five, five, six, two hearts. Yeah. Small blind checks. We got 195 in the middle. About SPR two. A little bit more than two. I would say before this situation that in this in this just general configuration where I flat or sorry I three bet pre flop and get multiple callers that I check range. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to this spot and I was like I really don't want to check that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> this is like one of the hand. Well, this is like nines, tens, eights. You're like, mm, I really yeah. don't want to just check and let four cards over realize." So, you Sounds like you sort of somewhat agree with that, or you don't, you know, like it's it's crazy to make like a, a kind of a strategic change for this specific portion of our range. I don't. I think betting makes a lot of sense here. Um, just with the, you know, with the small blind in the mix too, uh, I think that Button's probably going to be playing fairly face up and probably going to be tend to be more passive if you check to them with their like king queens, king jacks, ace 10, ace jack, uh, queen jack jack 10 type of hands so i mean yeah I, I think that like you should just bet and kind of play it from there yeah <laughs> okay thanks thank god um so i do correctly or at least in your eyes correctly uh deviate from the normal plan which would be to check my my entire range here i stick out a third uh what do you think about the size i guess this is a situation that i'm rarely in because i'm checking range yeah um Size is fine. I, I think it's fine. I don't really, you know, I thought about going a little bit bigger 
Um, but I think the size is fine. Okay. So we go small, about 63 into the 195, and the button does this. Makes it 216. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting this to happen. Yeah. Ever? Yeah. Uh, it just seems like a jam to me. Okay. I don't really know, like, I don't really expect it either, but, like, I don't really think a 5 is doing this with the small blind still in play. Like, it just seems like so... It seems way more likely that they have some sort of flush draw or yeah. straight Like, 5 doesn't need to do anything extra to get the money in, right? Even even facing this tiny bet. So, like, right. you know, they could just call. Maybe the small blind raises or calls. Like, a lot of, yeah. you know, good downstream things can happen. So, you don't think that this is going to... Be a I, lot of trips or yeah. pocket sixes or like ace like five or sixes, right? Like I, I just don't think they have a lot of incentive to raise here. Yeah. And the hands that do have incentive to raise are flush draws and potentially mm -hmm. straight draws. Yep. The small blind folds and we go ahead and stick the rest in. Nice. Um and get called. Uh turn ace river ten, eleven hundred in the middle. Who do you think is gonna win this? Hopefully, Queen Jack of Hearts. <laughs> Ooh, the eights. You didn't even have to sweat that many outs. Yeah, that's not a sweat <clears throat> at all. Um, well, don't know if our analysis that the button was not a fish was <laughs> on point because that is quite, quite the maneuver there. Just raise calling all in with eights. You want to see what the small blind folded? I don't know if we can get to if we can get to that, but. That was just a, a random shocker. Uh, I don't really know what to do with the small blinds hand. Small blinds gonna have. I have no idea. Like, well, what am, what am I talking about? I don't know what they have. <laughs> Deuces or eight. No, no. I, I was genuinely like, oh wow. Oh. <laughs> wow. So, for the podcast listener, um, flop was five five six. John had nines. Got five, it. five, six, two hearts. Two hearts. Villain had eight. The small blind had ace four of hearts and just folded, folded on the flop. My turn ace. Woo. My goodness gracious. How did you win this hand? That is <laughs> that's a miracle that, that you somehow won this pot. Like it is. If this guy doesn't raise the button, we don't win. I mean, even like if they if did raise the button, you shouldn't win. Like, a a <laughs> Ace 4 should just jam. Like, what are they doing? Like, there's 200 in the middle, and you have the nut flush draw. Like, come on. Now, somebody, you know, s somebody hasn't been messing around with poker stove and running equity calcs. That's that's all I can say about, about the small blind. Um, well, really good hand to start us out. Let's see what hand number two. Well, what's the deal with hand number two? So, second hand... Thing. Um, hijack opens minimum, so twenty. Uh, fish calls twenty. John decides to call with eight nine of diamonds from the big blind. Could squeeze here. You too. said in the last hand that um <clears throat> you'd probably three bet a little bit more. It sounded like maybe not that much more, like a pip or two wider than usual. Uh, from the big blind, this is a slightly different configuration where it's like an early position open and a fish flatting the cutoff. Yeah. Um, are you? thinking about three betting a little wider in this spot too, or is there something different about this that makes you want to flat more or do not do what you said in the first hand? Uh, I mean, nines is just such a better hand than eight, nine that I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence. I think also they open two big blinds. So, you know, you're squeezing only wins five big blinds here instead of one, two, three, four, five. How many? One, two, three, four. It wins four and a half big blinds instead of like five and a half. Yeah. So one big blind less um, mm -hmm. than it would before. But, and obviously the hijack's a little bit stronger. So maybe if this were like cutoff button or, or button small blind, button small blind, I would slam dunk three bet eight, nine suited. Uh, okay. But this one, I'm more on the fence about. I'm just more indifferent. Um, so you decide to call. Uh, by the way, John has everybody covered. Um, about 100 big blinds deep. So there's now 65 in the middle. He has eight, nine of diamonds. Flop is king, eight, nine, rainbow. Um, I guess we'll start here. I think we just have to start out with check on a king eye board facing a, an open from 
from MP. MP yeah. is presumably the reg, and we're going to assume that the cutoff is the, the fish. He also started with an 80 big wine stack, so much more likely to be the fish. Yeah, um, I agree. I just check here with my bottom two. Reg starts out with a one-third pot C-bet and gets raised yeah. by the cutoff to $72. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So first things first, I don't think the reg is just betting range here, multi-way, especially with like the the whaleish player behind us, the 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 fish. Yeah. Um so I think this one third pot C bet is actually pretty meaningful. I fish could have every two pair combo, uh probably pocket nines and pocket eights. I maybe more pocket kings than the normal player because sometimes fish just randomly do things pre-flop like trap kings. Um, I don't think that the fish has a bluff here. Like, I don't think, I'm not sure that he does this with like six, seven or Jack 10 or queen 10, like those sorts of hands. I they think that's do it with like King queen too. King yeah. Jack, yeah. That's, King that would 10. be like a, maybe like the bottom end of their, their mm -hmm. raising ranges. Is maybe ace like king. king. Yeah. Ace king. That doesn't three bet preflop, yeah. which wouldn't, you know, again, it's a fish. So maybe that happens. Um, if they have kings, yeah, they got aces too, right? Yeah. They could have aces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I would three bet. I don't like flatting. Um, I think what you said is like really on point about the rag. Who so the the rag bet a third and then the fish raised three and a half x. Um, I, I think that like the reg's gonna have a couple categories of hands. They're gonna have a king, and then they're also gonna have like queen jack and jack ten type hands maybe six, seven as well. And so like flatting just lets those, those hands just play really, really, really well. Like I am concerned about the fish raising, but I don't want to let Jack 10 have like have the opportunity to just like realize equity or queen Jack, right? Queen Jack of clubs, like a hand like that, just like they have a, such a slam dunk, easy call. If we just flat that I think you have to three bet. Um, and then the sizing is like, Really interesting question because this is not a spot that comes at us every day. What do you? So I agree with the, the I guess we'll start with the action part. I also agree with three, but that's what I decided to do. Um, one of the things that I was planning on doing was three bet folding to a jam, especially if it came from the reg. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Or are you at all concerned that like the reg could find a jam here with aces and I don't think would, so. Would they? Yeah. I think that's okay. I think that's crazy. Aces. So you feel good about three bet folding if the reg I think sticks so. In. I think okay. the more likely hand that would be three bet that that would be like four bet jamming would be like jack ten of clubs or spades or hearts. Mm. Like just yeah, a, yeah, yeah. So some hand like that. Um but yeah, I, I'm totally on board with, with three bet folding. Uh, sizing what if the fish jams. I don't know. Um okay. Say a prayer, flip a coin, spin around five times, and randomly click a button. Um, I, I don't know, honestly. Uh, probably call, but that's that. Not love it. Yeah, I'm not yeah. not love it, but probably yeah. pro probably just call and say whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought the regs jamming range would be like relatively inelastic to size, like my three bet size mm -hmm. here. Um, so I just picked the smallish size and was planning on hopefully losing the minimum if I do get jammed on by the reg. That sure. that was basically the extent of my sizing thought process. Nice. So you went 180. So could have gone even smaller, right? Probably just could have made it like 140, 150, and that's what I was saying. I was wondering if like you should just click it, you know, just yeah. like one 135 or something. Yeah, yeah you yeah. went 185. I, I think it's fine. Like I don't, I don't. I don't really have much of an opinion on the size. I, I think like you could go too big, but I don't think this is too big. Um, so you make it 185. You have bottom two pair. The reg folds mercifully. And the fish folds. So everybody folds. Which, all things considered, I guess there could have been worse outcomes <laughs> than everybody folds. Got a little sad when you see what they had, but... Wow. The fish folds ace-king and the reg folds king-queen. 
both actually reasonable folds <laughs> for the <city. laughs> the fish though it feels really bad though when you have eight nine and, and these and you just see ace king just muck it you're like okay well i guess i, I should fold if he jams you should definitely fold if they jam yeah. um I, I don't really know if bad is the right word right like you're if we think about this situation in the multiverse, right? Like sometimes the fish will just get it in with ace kings. This for whatever reason they decided to fold this time, but it is what it is. I think you found the right action. It's unfortunate that they folded, but it you know the reg folding king queen. I think is just like obvious, obviously a good fold. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's a standard fold really. I don't know if good is good is probably stretching it. So. There you go. Um, yeah, I think you played both hands in the first half. Really, really good. We got one hand coming at you after the break, and maybe calling it a half is misleading. Maybe we've we've gone sixty six percent of the way through. We got one hand left. I go three for three. Can he go three for three? Maybe today's the day. Stick around. Find out. Are you a lone wolf searching for the ultimate pack? The CPG Wolf Program is a close-knit brotherhood hell-bent on one thing only, chasing poker greatness. Powered by bleeding-edge wolf strats and led by Coach Brad and his lieutenants, CPG Wolves are systematically prepared for almost any spot they'll encounter on the green felt. If you want to plug into an elite team and have a step-by-step -step game plan to realize your full poker potential, you can apply at cpgwolves.com. Space is limited, and the pack is only as strong as its weakest member. So only the hungriest, grittiest, and most driven will be accepted into the program. Applications are open at cpgwolves.com. All right, welcome back. John's prime opportunity to go three for three today. Maybe his last opportunity. We never know. You know, you're getting up there in age, on the decline of your career. Um, you may not ever get another chance to get three. <laughs> we might not ever have a three. I might not have <laughs> any three episodes or three hand episodes left in me. <laughs> uh, all right. So hand number three. You 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 can break break down the action. Whale whale limps. Not a fish. And John means that in the most derogatory term, I think. Oh, yeah. Just... Uh, <laughs> so we have an interesting spot already where, you know, the whale limps for 10. The, uh, the, the whale limps under the gun. Um, John's 100 bigs deep. The button isos the four big blinds. So $40. John's in the small blind with a shack of spades. I would still three bet, to be honest with you. I think, like, the whale is going to call the three bet cold quite often. So... I would just still three bet. Yeah. I think that would be like most of the time when I am like trying to decide, like, you know, the last two hands I asked you, I was like, Hey, would you three bet here? Would you like flat, flat? Like most of the time I'm not like seriously considering making a change. Like the nines, it's just always getting three bet. Right. I know I, I asked Brad and the eight, nine suited is just always getting called. Um, this guy was so whaley that I, I, I agree. I would, I would just three bet there too, that I, I actually just, this was like one of the few times where I made the adjustment and I was like, I'm just, I need to make sure that we, the three of us get in there. <laughs> you made, made sure. Um, yeah. I, I think they would just cold call the three bet. And <clears throat> yeah. I agree. You, with you could push out the button and that's like a, that that's, sure, that's sure. a, and the big blind, like home run. Yeah. yeah. Home run. Yeah. All right. So you call, there's going to be one 30 in the pot flop is ace 10, nine with the nine of spades. So John has top pair, Jack kicker, back door, flush draw. Um, 130 in the pot. You check. I think that's Flop checks through. very obvious. Turn is a pretty good one. It is the ace of hearts. Um, there's 130 in the pot. I'll get your opinion before I give my opinion. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I guess the first thing that I just want to address is the button deciding to check back. A um, little bit tough to know like how meaningful that is. There are... I think there's like one category of like reg that would just do a lot of checking back on this board and even check back some very strong hands like ace king and ace queen wouldn't wouldn't be like completely shocked. I think the fish or the whale being in there reduces that 
uh, the odds of that a little bit. Um, yeah. I think it's just, it's a little bit more likely that with this, you know, with this limp calling station in there that this guy just tries to get three streets with ace king or ace queen or maybe even a slightly worse ace than that so i think there is a little bit bit of like extra removal given the the context of the situation here to like some of their good checkbacks that being said it's possible that they just don't even care about that kind of stuff and they're just playing a strat and they, their strat is to check back one pair sure. hands multi-way and so that that's like th those are like kind of things that i'm thinking about um i think the that being said that the the button could still be checking back hands that are like very very strong that um will you know be happy to play for lots of money um versus my like top trip so i just decided to start value betting here targeting you know bluff catchers from either the fish or the or the button um i, I would i just pot it you potted it i was gonna say like typical multi-way theory is like half potish, but i would over bet honestly i think yeah, i was just yeah. 150 like just if the whale has a flush draw, they're calling. If they have a straight draw, they're calling. If they have an ace, they're definitely calling. So, like, let's just... A 10, they're calling. Like, yeah. Let, let's just, like, put as much money as we can in the middle. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I like your decision to, to size up. I, I would have gone even greedier than this and mm -hmm. just gone, like, you know, one, 190 or something. Um, you The whale folds, which is bad news. The red calls, which is, I don't know what news that is. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling questionable. I don't know how I'm feeling. Once okay. Like we went from feeling great to like, mm, you know, yeah. we're not, we're not feeling bad yet. Like I wouldn't say that, but not terrible, but I'm not on top of the Crazy. world. Like mm -hmm. if, if the whale called and the button folded, I would feel like a freaking champion warrior. But now I feel like, mm, am I getting fucked here? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so the river is a queen, which completes king jack of hearts. Yeah, it completes king jack of hearts. I don't think queens call the turn. Like it, pocket queens. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that would. I. I feel it quite bad here, to be honest, John. I, I'm like, I, like we beat ace five. I think this guy would ISO every suited A6. Yeah, we beat all this. Or maybe not even the suited one. You know, like, I don't know how far down he goes with, like, the, the offsuits, but, like, but this can is, they call all in with weird. those? Like, the kicker doesn't even play. Yeah. With, like, Ace Deuce, right? Like, yeah. they, at best, they, they can, like, hope for a chop when we, ha we do have, like, Ace 10 and Ace 9. Like, maybe, but we, we probably have Ace 10 off in, fully in range because of the whale dynamic preflop. So I don't know. I, I think like my I think it's like I would about seventy percent of folded jam, I think is the is the way I would go. Um I think seventy gets called by an ace and I think their jam is significantly under bluff, so I can't I can't imagine them jamming a bluff. Okay. It's hard for them to have jams, right? I don't know, but I'm just saying, like that's that, like I mean, just like if you got jammed on right and you call and you lost, like kind of like what, what, what would like not surprise you? Ace queen. Okay, yeah, I agree. That's probably the one hand. That that's like the one that yeah. would not surprise me at all. That they check back ace queen and they river a boat. So that was my thought, and then I saw the queen on the river, and I was like, oh, that's great. There's less ace queen now. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> there is. Uh, so what what? option did you take i did not bet seven yeah i got really happy about there yeah. being less ace queen on the river and i decided to target all the asex bluff catchers that are where their kickers don't play yeah so you you got ultron greedy here and and went for the <clears> jam <throat> i you know what this would be really good with i'm just like thinking of like bluffs like queen jack of hearts i think I think this would be really good with Queen Jack of Hearts. And one thing that makes me dislike your jam with this hand is that I think this would be really good with Queen Jack of Hearts. Because <laughs> I, I, I think like you, you could fold out like trips, um, no. like Ace-5, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ace-4, Ace-3, Ace-Deuce, and Queen Jack of Hearts would block Ace-Queen. So, yep. And King Jack of Hearts, which is... And King Jack of Hearts, too, which is yeah. totally in their range. Yeah. So... The king queen of hearts, the queen jack of hearts, those would be right. cool hands to do this with. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think this is just a little too thin. No, I just think it's too thin. 
plus when you bet 70%, like you don't give yourself an out in case of disaster, like the King Jack or the Ace Queen. Yeah, but also they don't want as much when they bluff catch with Ace Eight. That's true. And if they fold Ace Eight, you definitely don't win as much money. You know, what do you have here? Like, well, like, like really, like your range, you don't have bluffs, right? Like, what bluff do you have? I guess King Queen and Queen Jack of Hearts would be your seven, only eight, two available. Seven Eight suited. Yeah, seven eight suited. I like, I, like my range is going to be like totally warped pre flop because of the. Sure. You know, like I'm going to have way more. Like I have, I have Ace Jack suited here. Like I'm not supposed to. Yeah, that's true. That means you have ace ten and ace nine and maybe ace queen too. Like it's not the yeah. most you have ace jack suited, so you may have ace queen off, right? Like those hands yeah. are not totally different from each other. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I, I think I, I think you're gonna generate folds from ace X. And I think that's that's problematic with jamming here. So plus you don't give yourself an out if they do jam. And I think like putting yourself in <laughs> position in that scenario where they do jam that you can fold is like really, really good. No, no, no. I like that line now that, now that I see it. I mean, ugh, I don't know if I'd like to think that I thought of that in game. I can't remember exactly. And then I, that was just overridden by like, you know, sometimes they might call with ace five. So we yeah. just have to, so you're just going to stick it in. To, yeah. The good news is we didn't generate folds uh, from ace X. The bad news is it's because you didn't have ace X. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They had the ace queen. So, Ace, ace, ten, nine, queen. So, well done. You, We jammed 2x on the river. <clears throat> right smack into the stone cold nuts. So, two out of three. Don't know if you're ever going to see this opportunity again. <laughs> how does it make you feel to let this one slip through your grasp? <sighs> I mean, one thing that makes me feel a little bit better is that had I threw that, I think the same... We probably just end up here anyways. Maybe we end up here sooner. I don't know. You know how in award shows, they always ask the person like who they thank? Uh, so I'll ask you, like, who do you blame for this? <laughs> 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 who do you blame for, for getting stacked here? The whale? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you make man. me bet so big on the turn, dude? <laughs> Bot didn't have to be this large if it wasn't for you. I'd like to blame the whale, my parents, for instilling this notion of greed in me, capitalism. <laughs> uh, so many things to blame. All right. I, I think it's, uh, I, I don't think it's like the most obscene thing I've ever seen, but I do think 70 is superior personally. No, um, 70 fold. 70 fold. Yeah. Seems, seems quite good. Uh, uh, try to do better next time. I mean, when you bet pot three ways with the whale, that's so. <laughs> that makes yeah, this guy's probably scared with ace queen, right? He's like, "Damn, yeah. I'm just I'm gonna call pot and I'm gonna call the river and I'm not. It's gonna suck." Yeah, like, he's he's scared, right? Like it's it's pretty transparent what you're doing. You you made yourself transparent because you didn't give a shit about what the whale thought, and then like the brag on the button, who can obvi- obviously knows like, oh my god, like this dude is like pumping the pot. And if I don't uh, hit a queen on the river, this is going to be <laughs> he's going to feel real bad, real yeah. bad. Um, all right. Well, good try. Sorry about your loss. And I guess you'll, you'll try to do better next time. See you next week. See you next week. Thanks for listening to Chasing Poker Greatness. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Go to ChasingPokerGreatness.com to get the newsletter. Join the Greatness Village community, book a coaching session, or dive into the latest data-driven poker courses. Follow the show on Twitter at CPG Podcast.